Hey, what's going on? This is Marcos. Today, I want to show you how I color graded my footage. I've been uh, editing my reel for the first time, and I'm encountering all these different cameras I've used over the years. I'm talking about Blackmagic, Red, Sony, and I want to show you some examples of how I approach color grading that type of footage. Obviously, you know, my workflow is a little bit different, so, you know, hopefully you learn something from this. So without further ado, let's jump over to the computer. All right, so I want to show you my reel because I have footage from all kinds of different cameras. Uh, here you're looking at the Red Komodo, um, Zcam FS7, Blackmagic Ursa, Pocket 4K, uh, FS7, and I approach color grading differently depending on the type of footage. Obviously for red footage from the Red Komodo, there's a plugin for, for red, uh, that you can install and you can modify the red raw settings. This is a default uh, Rec 709 BT 1886. Usually I, I think this is applied automatically once you import red footage. Otherwise I would use these settings if you're using the Komodo. And the only thing I, I, I might change is the ISO, the Kelvin and the tint. Sometimes I don't even touch the Kelvin or the tint. I might touch the ISO if I need more contrast and you apply it if you make changes and you can also revert to the original values or neutral values if you you know just want to start again from the beginning um, but i want to show you what it looks like or what i do in color finale 2 to get it to this point so here you'll see that i only applied a lot and i you know the color wheels i just added some warmth to the to the midtones and the highlights if i uncheck these it deselects the the color grade so and check the the lut you see there this is what comes once the image is converted from red raw so it needs more color it needs more contrast and the way i go about color grading is um let's say i'm not dealing with skin tones right now so i can go a little get a little bit crazier with with the color grade so i would come here to the these four squares this is the insert letter preset and I have a bunch of LUTs here that I can preview. This is something you're not going to get with the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, this is why I love Color Finale. I can see all these different LUTs, preview them. These are LUTs that I bought from a website called IWLTBA, something like that. It'll be linked in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, they give you a bunch of great LUTs you can, you can see. And so I ended up choosing this one. We select it you see that adds a lot of contrast and color back in and then i just warmed it up a little bit okay moving on to the next image let's do something that's less dark how about this one this is a um interviews we did for a documentary uh short-sighted very stylistic you can see there this is the ursa and let's see how i approach this um if we go to uh, there's no black magic raw settings here that you can do I, oh you know what i remember now i imported this using transcoder because it was b raw footage and so if we go to the transcoder which is also sold by the same company color finale uh, i was able to take a small piece of it and import instead of having to bring in the whole interview i just uh, brought in a piece of the of the interview that way i didn't you know, I didn't have to take up so much storage in my in my editing drive, and I was able to import B-raw footage right here into Final Cut. So uh, let's let's look at how I color graded this. Let's go to the layers. You see, I have vectors. There's a lot I loaded and the curves. So if I unselect these, see what I did at the beginning. Um, basically, this is what comes straight out of the camera. This is flat, right? And so I needed to add contrast. And so I like to do that, do it with curves. You see here, I just crushed a little bit more of the shadows. And man, that's pretty much it, you know, a little bit of an of an S curve. And the next thing I did is I applied this LUT, this which, which is one that I use quite often, F6600. If we select it, it adds more pop and color into the image. Also, if you see down here, I only applied it at 50% opacity 
because I didn't want to affect it too much. It's just a little bit. And obviously you're going to apply it at whatever percent you think you need. You can also go in here and if I want to do something different, I can preview all these different LUTs. Uh, but obviously the you have to choose something that doesn't affect the skin tones too much. Otherwise, you know, some, some of these look really cool, but they do affect the skin quite a bit and then you have to correct for that. Um, so I chose this one. It does a nice pop and it doesn't affect the skin too much. And if it does, what I like to do is I, I, um, I use the image analysis here. I go to isolate ellipse tool and move this over to the skin, make it smaller. I like to do this instead of using a mask uh, that, you know, there's a masking tools in Final Cut, but this is much faster. And you can see it's right on the skin tone line, which is pretty good. I can always change the tint over here or do it with the vectors. Sometimes I do it with the vectors. I might shift the hue ever so slightly to the left or the right, depending on what's needed. Um, it's, it's pretty much on the skin tone line. I, I probably wouldn't touch this much. Doesn't quite need it. And then, you know, looks good. So I can always add contrast to it as well if I needed to, or decrease the, the luminosity that affects the skin. I can just like tweak it here with vectors and yeah. So that's how I would approach color grading this image. Obviously, I don't try to go crazy with color grading, especially for documentary type of shoots. Uh, this one is more experimental. I could go crazy. There's we're not looking at any skin of the person, so I was able to you know go a little bit crazier with with my color grade. Um, I guess let's do one more. This one here is from the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. I like to grade from scratch. That means I, first of all, do an S curve. Let's unselect all of these to see what the image looked like. This is straight out of the camera, right? And then add an S curve. And when I'm doing the S curve, I try to look at the, the waveform. You know, I try to crush the shadows and bring up the highlights if I need to, just to create more contrast. And I add a little bit of saturation as well over here. You can see here. And I might change the temperature and the tint. And then again, the LUTs, this is where it comes really useful. You see that it adds more of a pop and, and a little bit of a color to it. And again, I was able to choose the right LUT, you know, thanks to the previewer. I was looking at all of these and like, whoa, this looks, this pops right at me. So obviously I chose that one. Also, you can see down here, I only applied the opacity of the LUT to 85%. Um, and if you want to import your own LUTs, all you have to do is go over here to the, you know, you load in Color Finale, you um, go to Preferences, and you go to the LUTs here, and you click the plus, and you go find that folder where you have all the LUTs, and you, you uh, select them, and it'll load up in here. You might have to restart Color Finale in order for you to see them uh, over here, but then they populate here and you can start previewing all of them. So that's that's how you do it. Uh, then maybe I just add a little bit of, uh, I don't know what I did there, just a little bit of uh, contrast, a little bit more. And the HSLs is to take out the uh, any color shifts in the shadows, just take off the green that's here. Um, so that's pretty much it. I try to keep it very simple. Obviously, the, a major part of this is knowing how to convert the footage. Uh, there's some cameras that are just easier to convert uh, than others, uh, but I would strongly suggest you play with curves as much as you can instead of relying on a conversion light. If you, but if you have let, let's say Red Raw, then it it's awesome. So obviously stick to that. But uh, if you don't have that, then go to with curves just to convert the footage. And then LUTs should be used as a way to just bring in an extra pop to your image. Obviously, I don't try to color grade my footage with just one LUT that does everything for me. The like, adds the whole, it, you know, typically doesn't work for that way. Usually, I only use LUTs as a creative choice, as a way to just add a little bit more to the image, a little more, more pop. 
So there you have it. Hopefully this helps you out. If you have any questions, please let me know down below. Also, if you want to see more videos like these, you want to see more uh, uh, tutorials on Color Finale 2, I'll be happy to make them. There's a bunch of advanced features that just came out, got released in Color Finale 2. And I would be happy to show you if you're interested. So please let me know as well. As always, I appreciate you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.